Okay, welcome to plant anatomy. So um, it does get technical, so make sure you pay attention. Um, so what we really are talking about here is all the different parts of the plant. So you've got roots, you've got stems, you've got leaves, all these different parts. Um, so what's going to happen is um, the plant cells are going to start to develop when you've got a seed. And um, what's going to happen is you're going to have that developing plant, which is the little embryo, and then you're going to have the food source for it, which is all within the seed. And in between it, you're going to have something called a suspensor, which is almost like an umbilical cord connecting the plant that's growing to its food. Um, all right, so root and shoot formation obviously is going to happen. You're going to have a little shoot and you're going to have a little root. Um, auxin is going to be a very important um, hormone you're going to see come up again and again and again. And it does help with the root and the shoot formation. It also helps the roots to sense gravity so they know to grow down. Um, so dicots, what's going to happen is they're going to create um, a little um, baby plant inside the, the uh, seed and that's going to have two little bulges on it whereas a monocot is going to only have one. And I think I've got a picture of that. Um, yeah, so a dicot will have two, a monocot will have one and we kind of talked about that in the previous chapter. Um, so like I was saying, food storage is going to happen in the seed and what's going to happen is that food storage is called an endosperm and once the, the um, little baby seed starts to actually grow into a plant, it needs that food because it can't do photosynthesis till it breaks the ground. So it's very important not to put a seed too deep in the ground or else it's going to run out of its reserves. Um, okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to create that seed coat, which we talked about before, and you're going to have what's called meristem tissue. So um, meristem tissue is like stem cells, but for plants. So they haven't been told what they're going to be. And so you've got a couple of different types, and the first type we're going to talk about is an apical meristem. So that's at the apex of the plant. So it's going to be at the tips of the shoots and the tips of the roots. And so primary growth, which is going to just be that elongation, is going to happen at the apical meristems. So um, you're going to have that primary plant body, and um, that is going to make up the root of the plant, right? And a little bit of the shoot of the plant. And um, what's going to happen is you're going to have a root cap at the tip of the root, and that's to help it push through the soil because you got these new developing um, uh, cells that are dividing, and so they're fresh and you don't want to damage them, so you have that root cap to help. Now the other type of meristem tissue is going to be lateral meristem and that's going to usually be in woody plants and that's like tree rings and that type of thing, how they get thicker every year. And so um, anytime you have that outer growth like that, that's going to be lateral meristem. So um, cork cambium is going to make the um, outer bark tissue and then you've got vascular cambium which is going to make secondary vascular tissue. I wouldn't worry too much about that actually. I'm not going to get that crazy about that, but there it is. So any plant is going to have a root system and a shoot system. The root system is going to anchor the plant. It's also going to absorb water and nutrients for the plant. So it is important even though it's underground. The shoot system is going to be the stems and the leaves, and that's going to help to position the leaves to make photosynthesis happen. So there's going to be three basic types of tissue in plant. Your plants, you're going to have dermal tissue, ground tissue, and vascular tissue. So dermal tissue, like it sounds, is going to be on the outside of the plant. Ground tissue is going to be the main part in the middle of the plant. And then vascular tissue is going to be your xylem and phloem. So um, the dermal tissue is going to be made of epidermal cells, and there's a couple of different forms of it. You can have, and I think I've got good pictures of this somewhere. Okay, these are the three tissue types right here. Um, you can have guard cells, which are going to protect those stomata that we've talked about. You can also have trichomes, which is like that fur that you see, those hairs sticking off of the plant. And that has a whole bunch of functions. One is that it can hold on to the dew, like when you have morning dew, and so it can keep moisture on the plant to keep the surfaces cool. And also, all of those little hairs are making shadows, so that's going to help to keep the surfaces um, cooler as well. Then you're going to also have these little guys called root hairs. And root hairs are just going to extend off the root and give it more surface area so it can absorb um, even more nutrients and water. So those are going to all be dermal tissue, and those are all right there. Then you've got ground tissue, and ground tissue is going to be like the main bulk of the plant, and there's three types of that, and I've got some good pictures for those. So you've got parenchymal cells, and what, you, what I want you to notice about these is the cell walls are all pretty uniformly thin, right? So um, that's the most common type of um, 
ground tissue cells that you're going to see. Then, and here's some more parenchymal cells, you can see they all have that thin wall. Then you are going to have scleren or cholenchymal cells, sorry, and cholenchymal cells are going to have cell walls that vary in thickness. Now the benefit to that is that there are some thicker parts, so it's going to allow it to grow pretty tall, but then the thin parts are going to allow it to have a little bit of flexibility so that if it's windy, it can kind of bend in the breeze, right? Um, and then you're going to have what are called sclerenchymal cells. And sclerenchymal cells are really, really, really thick cell walls, and that's going to make it very rigid. So think of like a tree, right? That doesn't really move too much. When it gets too windy, it just breaks, okay? But that's going to allow things to grow even bigger um, like a tree. So that's going to be all of the ground tissue. Um, in the next video, we'll get into the vascular tissue and talk about how that works.